Perfect. Thanks, guys. Okay, we're going to move on to Logan going over new power effects formula. Hey, all um, Yeah, so this is just, we've been seeing more and more things in dynamics that are uh, reaching into power effects. Um, Colby's played a lot with power effects in Canvas apps, and beyond that, there hasn't been much, but now we have power effects in the command bar, and then there's going to be a new um, data type in as a dataverse column called a uh, power effects column. And so then you can uh, add power effects to your calculated it, instead of a calculated column, but that is just in preview. So I'm just going to go over some of the things you can do um, with PowerFX in the command bar. So that's one of the new places we have it. And that one is actually um, generally available. So um, I just opened up the app in make.powerapps in my solution. And so then that opens up this app. And then um, if you select the entity, that you want to edit the command bar, then you can just say edit command bar. And then here you can select which command bar you want to edit. Main grid is when you're on the list of all the records for that table. Main form is when you're on a single record with the form. Subgrid view is when you're on just the, um, the when this record is a subgrid inside of another record. And then this new one associated view is if they select like related records and then pull it up in its own associated view, then you have some control there. Um, but we're mainly just going to be going over power effects. So we'll just jump into the main form. So um, you'll notice any existing buttons can't edit because they're using the legacy syntax. Um, eventually that'll change, but right now, if you want to use PowerFX or even use this at all, you have to be creating a new button. So we'll just create a new command. And I have this set credit hold that's running JavaScript, but now let's convert this to a uh, PowerFX button. So, um, for the label, I'm just gonna call it the same thing. But we have a little bit of different wording. And then we can select an icon. And I don't really care what it is, so we're just gonna select one. Um for the action, this is where you can say run JavaScript or run formula. So in this case, we just want to run a formula. If you click open formula bar, that just moves your cursor to this formula bar. Um, and you'll notice that it's showing the on select. So here, um, any updates or creation of a new record is through the patch formula or function. Um, and then it's asking the data source, which is pretty much the table. So in this case, we'd say accounts, because I'm on the account record. And then the actual record, you get that by saying self.selected. And so this will work whether you're on a um, main form or on a grid view or subgrid view, because it's looking at selected. Um, as the record, um, but in this case, we only have one, so it's just going to be the selected item. And then we have the object of what we're actually updating. So in this case, I just want to set credit hold, and so it gives us all this nice IntelliSense of the field, and I want to set it to true. Then we'll close that out. 
they even publish. Does it get saved into the same solution XML like the legacy ribbon stuff uh, does? No, so this gets saved in a component library. So you'll have to add that component library to your solution. Okay. Um, and as well as the, the app, since you're updating changes to the app. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so we have the patches here. So then I'm just going to do hard refresh. Now we see our set credit hold button. And if I look at details, let's actually set this to no first and we will discuss setting visibility as well. But nice. Okay. So now credit hold set to yes. Looks like I just Refresh the page too early. It wasn't ready yet. Um, so now credit hold set to yes. And that's a lot easier than having to go through and create JavaScript. And um, you won't have to get a dev when you want to just set a, just a field value on a record. And we can go even like a couple steps further. So let's say. Um, visibility, we can say show on condition of formula. And here we can say if, um, and then we'll say self dot select, selected dot item dot credit hold. Well, actually, we don't even need this if because credit hold is actually a true or false. So if credit hold does not equal yes, that exclamation point means does not equal, then I want it to show. But if it equals yes, then I don't want it to show. So with just that formula, then we can change the visibility. But if we go back to on select, we can even do a little bit more here. So Say we're doing something a little more daunting, so now we want to confirm. So this confirm is going to send back a true or false, whether they confirmed or not. So I can say, are you sure? And then if we throw this inside of an if, so this is our logical test or condition. So if confirm, are you sure? So that'll either return true if they say yes or return false if they hit cancel or exit out. And our first, uh, our second argument is when they say yes. And then uh, our third argument is if they say no. And if you don't want it to do anything when they say no, you can just leave out that third argument. So in this case, we just have our if that's wrapped around the confirm as the logic and then our patch as if the logic returns true. And then we can even go a little further and notify. And so this is the same as throwing up that form notification, but this is at the app level. So we would say credit hold set. And then we can set the notification type so we can say success and then we can give it a timeout in milliseconds. So say we want it to just be there for five seconds. And now we have kind of multiple different scenarios that we're hitting. Um, one thing that I found is there are a list of functions that aren't accessible through command bar. And um, one of those is setting a variable and another is updating the context. So like if I were to do a patch 
create a new record and then try and navigate to that record. I haven't figured out how to do that yet in a formula because I can't set a variable and I can't um, update the context so that it's looking at that new record. Um, and if I just put a navigate around the patch, it doesn't like that either. So you have a little bit of um, limitations and I'll send a link with the list of like what you can and can't do in command bar with power effects, but I imagine it'll be pretty similar with the um, the new column as well. Let's see hey Logan, I think we that. have a question really quick. Yep. Is that me? Yep. OK. Um, the scenario I'm thinking of is um, on a, a record that is locked. Uh, for whatever reason, an, an order that's been fulfilled, for example. Could you use this to prompt a user for a date and then update a date field on that lock record? So using a button. Um, Does it make sense? I, yes. I haven't tried opening up a dialogue from here, but um, that might be one of the ones that you can do. Okay. Right now, we basically have a flow and they have to manually go select that flow and run it and input the date value they want and then the flow can update the record. But yeah. if we could just do that with a button here and a formula, that, that would be a lot slicker. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Yeah, so for some reason we aren't getting the visible. Back too much into Derek's time, so uh, we'll just set that back to no for now, and then. I don't think you I don't think you set the actual value that it needs to for that condition. Back in your formula. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it just hasn't updated with the new version yet. Yeah, it's in the formula. It's question I know Mac had had. Problems with this on moving. This between environments and sometimes it doesn't work and you have to like share the component library or something. Yeah, that was one thing we ran into where the we had to end up sharing a component library. Um, but I, I did do it another time and I didn't end up having to share it, so. Not fully sure yet. It kind of seems like we need to do a little more testing on the side of when this is moving from one environment to the other to see how that moves over. OK, there we go. So even though it says that it's done saving and publishing, I Guess it still takes a while. OK, so now credit holds yes. It's not here. I set that back to no. And then I save that. Now it's back. So I can say this and then get our confirmation dialog. And then when I hit OK, then we get our notification up top here. Of credit hold set. And we have our credit hold set to yes. So there's a decent amount we can do with the power effects formulas. Um, and we'll, I imagine we're going to start seeing it more and more. And that's it for me. Does anyone have any questions?
This Great. only applies to the ribbon bar at the moment, or can we apply it other areas? Uh, yeah, Canvas apps, they've been doing power effects for a long time, and then there's going to be a column, a new column data type that uh, you can use the, to calculate fields, but they'll still keep the calculated column. Awesome, thanks, Logan. 